Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week, there's a different theme. So keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner. We're broadcasting live from TUT, the Pretoria Derby, really. It's TUT versus Tax. Come hang out with us here at the 5 FM, very special VIP area. It was okay for you to drop me just like this, the time go makwa peniwako, but I am not that anymore, and I will not be your plaything. So until you're ready to treat me with respect, stay away. A huge warm welcome to the 22nd annual South African Music Awards. Good evening to all ministers, deputy ministers, all MECs, the mayor, and all councillors present. And of course, all the protocol observed. Ladies and gentlemen, can you feel it? So we've been asking you to vote for your favorite TV presenter, and I'm sure you are at the edge of your seat wanting to know who is going to take the title tonight. Well, the wait is over. The results are in. Now, before we put Gatlejo and all of the other nominees out of their misery, let's take one last look at the nine nominees. From the M1 studios in Auckland Park, and welcome to season four of Ones and Twos. Now, 24 DJ slash producers are anxiously awaiting their chance to show you, Mzansi, that they have what it takes to be the next and possibly the best master of spin. Good evening to you and welcome to Real Talk here on SABC3 and I'm your host Azania Mosaka, a seasoned media personality with a career high not stopping anytime soon. Tando Tabete, or commonly known as Taboody, mm -hmm. is sizzling property. She dominates our airwaves, our screens, our stages and of course the social corners. Undoubtedly a slayer in her own lane. She joins me now on Real Talk this evening. Hello Tando. Hi. Or should I just say Taboody? No, Tando's fine. <laughs> This is weird being interviewed. But Why? I'm used to be on, on the other side. Right. This is fun. So might as well settle in. Yes. Come, come settle into yes. this position. Thank you for having Are me. you all recovered from the women's I day am, netball, netball I am tournament? Rested, uh, but we Alusha continua. More work continues. Absolutely. How much mm -hmm. did you raise this year? Sure. So we raised eighty thousand rands that we're gonna hand over to our beneficiary, which is Masimanyane Women's Support Centre. So yes. really excited about so that. So five years yeah. going. Yeah. That's incredible. It's been hard. I mean, a lot of people don't understand that this is something literally that I run on my own. Um, we really? go and we approach all these people to sponsor, to give us money, to give us goods so that we can give, you know, the ladies something to walk away with. So, I mean, it gets easier with the years. Yeah. Because you yeah, learn from yeah. the previous You've built year. systems, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how yeah. this goes every yeah. year. It's, br it's interesting that you say we, and I find a lot of people tend to do that, whereas it is almost like a one woman operation. Absolutely not. I work, well, I mean, it's a three man operation. <laughs> okay. So it's myself uh, and two of my managers that, okay. that run the entire show. Fantastic. Yeah. So netball, it's in your blood. Yes. When did you start? I mean, it's something that I did in school. It's something that I enjoyed. Uh, it's something, funny enough, I thought I'd actually take up as a career. Oh, play yeah, for once upon a time. Okay, did when you ever we get national colors, no, provincial colors, I that never was kind of thing? Great, no. Oh. That's when the dream was shattered. And mm -hmm. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's something that I enjoyed. And I thought, how can we get a bunch of ladies to enjoy Women's Day? And then we get male celebrities as well. So not yes. just ladies, guys as well. Okay, so were you that kid? at school who did all the extra murals. Everything Pretty much. you could get your hands on. Pretty much. Run, so it, I run through it, all of that. I wanted to be a, a cross country athlete. So I used to want to do marathons and all of that. So I did cross country, I did athletics, netball, I did debating, public speaking, drama. Yeah, I was a bit much. A liker of things. Yeah, I like her. <laughs> Good things. Good things. Of course, yeah. of course. So you grew up in Orlando West, mm -hmm. uh, part of Soweto that has great heritage. Mm. Tell me about your upbringing. You don't actually think of it that way. Like mm. I remember 
I mean, my crush was like back opposite Winnie Mandela's house, right? It's Latin is what it's called. Yeah. And you'd, you'd hear they'd say, you know, Winnie Mandela lives there and you'd be on the jungle gym and hope you'll get a little bit of a peek of them, which you never really do. Really? Yeah, and they'd give us like little postcards with their pictures, meanwhile they're next door. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you don't quite know when you're, when you're that young. Mm -hmm. you know? Everyone now makes a fuss of it, but back then, it you didn't have a full appreciation no. until you're way yeah. older. Yeah. Right, so, so that's where you call home. Mm -hmm. But you also grew up in sort of a matriarch mm. system, right? Mm. Take me back there. It's your mom mm -hmm. who raised you with your grandmother. No, so my, my dad was around. So my dad passed away when I was 13, but okay. an incredible father. Mm. So he was very much there as, you know, I was daddy's little girl, like through and through. So a fantastic dad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had mom, I had dad. Uh, until he then passed and then mom has done an incredible job i think mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so yeah until here i am wow so what was it like losing your dad do you Ooh. remember the grief that you experienced as a don't child don't go there why are we going oh. there um it's hard i imagine it's hard for any child mm. uh, i was 13 you know you're starting i mean i was just started high school it, it's a very important part of your life he was a very important part of of my life so yes very difficult i think yeah me. yeah mm. on his birthday you actually put up a really moving yeah. instagram post yeah talking about all those memories your love of music coming from yes him. so he used to like like his, he, you know back in the day how people used to have speakers in their boots in their boots rather he had a speaker in his boot yeah and you, you'd hear him before you see him <laughs> uh, and yeah so my love of music definitely stems from him also very loud very outspoken mm -hmm. yeah, very fun what was with eating liver raw oh or yeah raw i still liver? do it um so you, you just raw liver that you buy from your supermarket chicken so lamb doesn't matter what? like whatever's there you know whatever whatever liver. mom's cooking for dinner that night yes. before it goes into the pot it goes into the mouth like a little bit put a little bit of salt on it and it's yum raw it's good it's really good you still do it i still do it oh I it's yummy i promise try it <laughs> <laughs> last thing last thing i don't think i'd, I'd ever try <laughs> so that was your dad mm -hmm. um and then of course you have your grandmother yes she's amazing mm -hmm. she's amazing very soft-spoken mm -hmm. um but all around amazing good heart patient like i do no wrong in her eyes oh wow um so yeah so it was all around like lots of love. Lots of love. Enveloped in yeah. love. Yeah. That's beautiful. Because, you know, when you think of that era growing up in the township, mm. uh, it's often there all these societal things that we had to make do with. You saw them around you, mm. but then there, were, there was love and there was a way of also cushioning us from the hardships. We, we didn't even realize how mm. hard things were. Mm. So when did you first become awake to all of these realities? Sure. I mean, growing up, we weren't necessarily wealthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we lived in Pratia Glen for a while. And I mean, I had mm -hmm. a jungle Stop. gym. Remember my brother and I used to make biltong off the jungle gym. So we just dry meat and then we thought it was biltong. <laughs> um, but we had a nice house with, you know, nice high walls. But then you move to the suburbs and your house is not the biggest one in the street. In mm -hmm. fact, you live in a townhouse for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're like, okay, things are a little bit different. You know, you move to a different house. It still doesn't compare to your friend's house. And yeah. the little things that your classmates are perhaps afforded that you don't have, mm -hmm. uh, that you only, as you grow older, I think we want more as we grow older. And it's only when we grow older that we start comparing ourselves to our peers. And I think that's when you kind of get woke to it all. Right. Mm. In, when we opened up, we played sort of a mishmash yes. of some of the occasions you've graced, some of your roles that you've played. Mm. So the love of this industry, where did it come from? When did it start? I imagine school. I mean, I did my first play in grade seven, and that's when I knew I wanted to act, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, I thought I could speak well. <laughs> um, and then, to be honest, with radio, it started by pure coincidence. I thought if I got into radio, I could get onto TV. Mm -hmm. And I got into campus radio. And then I got into TV. So it happened as I planned. Yeah. But never did I think I'd fall in love with radio as much as I have. Mm. So that was never part of the plan. Mm. Um, but yeah, I love, I love everything that I do. Yeah. No, the beauty, uh, I also, my love for radio has often been more pronounced or mm. bigger mm. than my love for television, mm. for instance. And then we saw you on the screen gracing some of the biggest shows like Generation. Yeah. There you were. Yeah. The acting bug. Uh, actually, maybe let's hold that thought. Okay. I want to take a break. Okay. Because 
is actually a lot going on yeah. as far as that's concerned. Well, she's had a career which has been on a constant rise, as you've just heard, and a drive like no other. Don't forget that our lines are open to you if you have any questions. And uh, we'll be back with more with the beautiful Tandro Tabete after the break. Welcome back to Real Talk. If you've just joined us this evening on the couch, I'm joined by entertainment and media darling, Tandro Tabete. Her career moments always keep us wondering, what is her next move? Tando, before the break, we were tapping into this acting thing. Mm. Um, and was acting coincidental? No, that, that was the plan. That was the plan? That was the plan. Do you remember your first audition? Um, no. There were so many. But you auditioned like as young as 13. Yeah, well, that was like, um, it was more of a search. It was a presenter search. Uh. Uh, my actual first real audition, my first job, I didn't know I had to audition for. So I arrived, my agent. Were you did. thinking you had it? Yeah, I was like, I've got this job, I'm here to work. No, uh -huh. I was actually an extra, so I got there. <laughs> I'm like, can I have my script so I can learn my lines? <laughs> and they're like, no, 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 you just grab that jersey and then you stand from there and you just walk across to there. So you learn, you know, you, you learn. And then I learned, okay, you That's can't just a have a job. <laughs> you have to actually audition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, from there on, auditions, auditions. The first job that I did land was My Perfect Family, which was a sitcom on SABC One. Yes. Yeah. Did you have comedic timing? I think because so. Because often they say that th there's a different skill that's required Absolutely. for actors who do comedy. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I, think I, I think I did. I also worked with incredible actors and actresses. Well, my Lillian Dube was part of that baby trailer. So I, I had great uh, people with great experience mm. by my side. How did you deal with not getting a gig you wanted? I was okay with it mm -hmm. every single time. Was you weren't like, sitting on the phone and just like... No, I mean, it would get frustrating at times, but for, for the most part, I was just like, cool, when's the next one? Okay. Yeah. Oh, and auditioning, auditions can be I auditioned exhausting. so much. I, it was like now a career. I was like a <laughs> professional auditioner. So I got used to it. I was like, am I waking up for another audition today? <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, you know what? We did a little bit of digging. Okay. Yes. And we went to I the know. people that are closest to you, oh um, just for them to share their reflections on the impact you've had on their lives. Aww. So let's start, let's start with this one. We've got Mimi. Okay. Yes, oh who dropped you a message, take a look. From the streets of Soweto to playing Ibati to owning our TV screens and taking us home on the drive time show. The woman you've become is so strong and fierce, so unmoved and unshaken about chasing her dreams. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of the woman you are. This August month, I'm paying it forward to you. I know we played it forward just the other day, and I want you this August month, I dedicate the woman that you are to every woman in this country. I know it hasn't been an easy journey. I know when you lost your dad, Abe, whom we loved so much, and Sibu, who was our strength and our pillar, a lot made you rethink what life is. I know they watch over you and they root for you and they're so proud to call you the woman that they know they raised. I want you to know that I love you and I will continue to root behind you, root for you in everything that you do. I pray that you don't stop fueling the fire that burns within you. I know that our children and our children's children are going to be so proud to know that they had that woman that's so fierce and so strong redefine what it means to chase her dreams. I love you, Tando, and I'm so proud to see you become the woman that you've always wanted to be. And I ask you to continue fueling your fire, burning, burning it, burning it forward. Know that I love you dearly and we'll always be rooting behind you. Oh, my love. <laughs> Doesn't make me cry. That's your younger sister. Um, she's my cousin's your sister. Your cousin's sister, yes. Mimi Tabete. Yes. So a couple of things that she meant. Oh, you're welling up. Mm. Why? Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> you guys could have warned me. <laughs> <laughs> All red-eyed now. Yeah. So a couple of things that come up in there. We know that Tando is thinking of having children. Oh, I am? Well, she said all the children we're going to have in the future. Well, I mean, no, not okay. anytime soon. Not anytime soon, no. but someday. I'm pregnant with possibilities, something I tweeted the other day, and everyone's like, oh, you're going to name your child possibility. <laughs> <laughs> no That's children funny. Yet. That's yeah. quite funny. But then she also reflected or mentioned a very painful moment. You mm. guys lost your brother a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. Three years ago. Three years ago. That's mm. still quite fresh. Very fresh. How's that adjusting? Is someone that you lost someone that you grew up with who was also a witness to your lives? 
I think it's it's the idea of being an older sister to my younger sister for the first time. So being a middle child, you just kind of like doing your own thing. You know, mm. mom's worried about the oldest sibling maybe, or the older sibling is worried about the younger sibling. The younger sibling is like living the yes. best life. You know, I'm the I know that life. And the middle one is kind of just doing their own thing. Mm. And now being the oldest is a huge adjustment because now you're the oldest. Mm. Now you, like you're grown. Like yeah. I didn't know I was grown. <laughs> And so I had to be grown. Yeah. yeah. But first your dad yeah. was an influential male in your life. Yeah. And now your brother, who was also another influential male. Mm. So she even reflected on what you've learned about life as a result of some of the difficult things that have happened. What have been those lessons? What do you I mean, reflect you don't on? know you have to pay for like a grave in a graveyard mm. until you have to pay for a grave in a graveyard. You don't know that you what the process is of identifying a body until you have to identify a body. Mm -hmm. um, all those things that are very difficult lessons. You know, when you were a kid and you attend a funeral, you're just there. And then when you grow older and, it's and in you your home, it's funeral, happening to you. Yeah. Other than it happening to you, mm. you need to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Wow. So having to grow up yeah. in many ways yeah. that you hadn't anticipated. Yeah. Sure. We do have a caller for you. I know you're okay. still quite emotional, but let's take this one from Sandy calling from Peter Maritzburg. Good evening, Sandy. Yes, hello. Yes, Sandy, go ahead. Thunder's listening. Hello, how are you? Hi, Sandy. All right, that line is good. Uh, okay, we'll try and sort out that line. We'll call it back so that she can share Sandra, you her message to you a little bit later on. That there was just terrible feedback there. So, you know, you have a legion of fans, 5FM, people who've loved the characters on screen, the hosting ceremonies that you've done mm -hmm. in the past. It must mean a lot that people express this kind of emotion towards someone that they've never met before, and yet it's someone that has touched them. It's weird. I always say I'm like the worst celebrity. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know how to put it into words. Yeah. Uh, you know when you just kind of wake up and you do what you love? And I mean, it's amazing to have that love back. I mean, everyone wants to be appreciated for whatever it is that and they do. And affirmed in that And affirmed, yeah. told, you know, you're doing okay. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're moving in the right direction. So I appreciate and love the love. It's, it's just, uh, it's weird to get used to. <laughs> <laughs> I can see your awkwardness. So what do you do when you meet people? I don't, I freeze up. I literally freeze up. And I think some people think I'm a horrible person. Mm -hmm. um, oh, wow. I do better in situations where it's a work environment. So if, for example, I don't know, I'm, I'm at an OB and you know, people come up to me, that's fine. But if I'm at a mall, I forget sometimes. Yes, yes. And then you're just like, what's happening? <laughs> and then you're like, oh yes, Ghana, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's a little bit strange. That's yeah. a bit funny though. Yeah. We've got another surprise for you. Okay. We're gonna wow. work on Sandy, but then we've got another surprise for you. Okay. Here's another recorded message for Tando. Hi babe. So where do I even begin? I remember meeting you 10 years ago at Varsity and I think what was the most striking about you is that not only were you book smart, but you were very charismatic as well. You were the girl who wanted to go out, but you still wanted to study, but you still wanted to do campus radio, but you still wanted to audition. And I think that's the one thing that I think is the most admirable about you. You've been very persistent and very passionate, consistently so over the years, and that has brought you to where you are right now. I'm so proud of everything that you've achieved. Thank you for keeping true to who you are and being the same silly little girl that I met 10 years ago. I wish you all the best in everything that you do and I hope that everything that you touches turns to gold. Love always. It's your friend Dumela. You've kept yes. a close knit over the years. I have. You? I mm. have. Why? To be honest, there's nothing deliberate. It wasn't like I was like, all oh, my friends that are friends are going to be friends forever. It's just, I was fortunate in that I met real people that are great people mm. that have stuck with me over the years. That's all it mm. is. I don't think it's my doing, no. So who in the industry has your secrets and whose secrets do you have in the industry? In the industry? Yes. I mean, a few. <laughs> <laughs> Give me three names. No. Whose secrets, who has your secrets? In the industry? Yes. Maybe if they're watching, they can tell me. No, don't tell me now. <laughs> Um, I don't know, maybe like Kanya, mm -hmm. Kangisa, mm -hmm. um, Andy Siwa, who was a, a colleague of mine on Generations. Okay. Um, yeah. That's fair. That's all right. Why? No, just oh. saying. 
Just saying. Well, when we return... I feel return... like you're going to reveal something, no? <laughs> okay. No, you can be rest assured. Well, when we <laughs> return, we chat family, friendships, and bonding. Tundra's not going anywhere, so keep those calls coming in. We'll see you in a bit. Well, it's Real Talk here on SABC3, where the stage is yours. Thank you for staying with us. Tando Tabete is a lady who appreciates and values the power of family and friendship ties. Having been brought up in a loving structure, it was only natural for her to contribute to the woman that she is today, as you've heard. But Tando, I want to actually explore before, because there was a lot going on with your career. You auditioned when you were 13, carried on with loads of auditions, um, got a number of acting roles, and then you were juggling varsity and the radio gig that you had. Uh, and then you finished studying, did your BCom, mm -hmm. and then you went into marketing. Mm -mm. What? And then I was doing what I'm doing now. No, but there yes. was a gap. There was a period no. where you went for a marketing job. No, oh, <laughs> I went for an interview. Was it an interview? It was an interview, the only ever job interview I've ever been to. Yeah. Uh, and I got the job and it wasn't really marketing. Mm. It was more promotion <laughs> than marketing, but they sold it as though it was going to be marketing. But um, what, so what was, did you have to do? What they wanted me to do was sell car polish in like the parking lot. So, I mean, I arrived in like heels and like a pencil skirt marketing job. <laughs> no, I was selling uh, car polish. Needless to say, I quit on the spot. On the first day? Yes. So what I signed up for. Yes. Yeah. Did you try at least? No. How hard was it to sell car polish? No, I didn't even try. I was just like, this is not what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> we all have to pay our dues yeah. somehow. Yeah. So it seems like you have a knack for misinterpreting things. First, the audition where you thought you had well, the job. I mean, you learn the hard way job. sometimes, right? You learn the hard way. So your and eyes I mean, are opened up. We didn't have like Google on our cell phones. Yes. So, uh, you know what I mean? So yes. you just kind of go with, All right. go with it. You were quite anxious about the surprises that we have for you tonight. Mm. And it doesn't stop there. Oh God. No, it doesn't stop there. You're not gonna get away with it mm. that easily. We have invited a very special guest. You mean here? Here, someone who oh, means a lot God. to you. Someone who has shaped who you are. Your mom is here. Oh, no, guys. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, boy, he is here. Tando's mom joins I'm us mom. now. <laughs> How's it been? You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Hello, Ma. How are you? I'm good in you. Good, thank you. Good. It's great to have you here. Thank you. When last did you talk to your mom? Ask me about her. When last <laughs> did you talk to your mom? Did you speak to her today? Um, I spoke to her last night. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So we managed to keep this away from her. Yeah, we managed to. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Earlier on, we heard from one of Tando's oh. friends about the woman that she has become. Okay. When you look at her, what do you say to her about the kind of woman she's developed into? It's amazing. Mm. Amazing woman that um, I don't believe it's her. Like, I'm calling with a racist superwoman. Mm -hmm. oh. What kind of child was she? Oh, go get her. Always want to do everything. I used to take her for auditions while she was still a baby. Mm. Yeah, at the crash, she would do some um, acting and dances. Always like, wants to sing, but unfortunately, singing <laughs> is a no go area. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw that sparkle from yeah. a really, really young yeah. age with her. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And often, I'm a parent too. So often with our kids, our dre their dreams, mm. they scare us. Yeah. You know, the things that they talk they about. Do, Why yeah. do I want to be a basketball player paying for the NBA yeah. in the US? That's what my son says to yeah. me. So did her dreams ever scare you? Um, not really, because when she grew, I knew she wanted to be a performer, some actor or performer or something, because she was always like active and want to do something and like be on stage. Mm. like. It doesn't want to, it's not an office person. I saw that one, it's not going to work. That one was not gonna work. Yes. Yeah, but she started to become accounting and then she had a degree. Mm. And then she, I said to her, you can do whatever you want to do after that. Yes. Yeah. And all of that hard work, Tando surprised you with the car. Yes. You must Amazing. have cried your eyes out. Oh, I did. Mm. I did. I what did. did that mean? Oh. It's a, it's a, it's a, it was the first thing that I ever had. Like somebody bought it for me and like me buying something for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tando, that was a great gesture. Well, she deserved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, just elaborate on that because 
you don't just you we we tell our parents all the time we want to take off the load mm. as much as we can because of, we recognize the sacrifices mm. that they made in getting us to to where we are mm. i feel like if you're a mom and you've raised a, a woman who's my age she should be able to afford you everything that you want and that's what i am constantly working mm. towards she shouldn't have to lift a finger because mm. she's done her job it's finished yeah. it's my turn yeah, <laughs> to give back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, they were, what, they three children? Yes. Were three children. Mm. And now it's just the sisters yes. left. Yes. And we were talking about the grief um, mm. that, as a family, you had to contend with at the mm. time. Very difficult, even for it you was, as a parent. Yeah, it was, it was something terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know, you know, um, as a parent, you don't expect uh, your child to, to die or to pass away. Yeah. You expect the, the child to bury you. Mm. Not the other way around. Absolutely. She works in the limelight, Mabun. I know. And you know, the limelight can be cruel. Mm, I know. It can be hard. Yeah, I know. Have you ever felt like you wanted to swoop in and <laughs> no. just protect Sometimes, her from... Especially on social media, yes. like they will say something funny. And I said, you know what? I don't care. They can say whatever they want to say. Like bleaching. Last time they said <laughs> that she bleached. And I said, they don't know how, how like, she, where she comes from. Her genes are like from us. Mm -hmm. I'm light in complexion. <laughs> My, her, her father was light in complexion. The grain is also light, so mm -hmm. I don't know what bleaching comes from. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's one of those. So it's nothing that you can debate about. Yes. Are you on social media? Yes, I am. She stalks me. So <laughs> she's I got to, a I have pseudo accounts. She won't tell me what her handles are, <laughs> but she knows everything that I'm doing. Like she'll yeah, be like, oh, I, I saw to. you. I'm like, oh, I'll come wearing an outfit. She's like, did you wear that too? I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. How do you know this? Yeah. How do you yeah. know this? Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. You know, that you're keeping I have your to keep eye. Updated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, updated. <laughs> updated. What are you doing? What she's updated. doing at the back, like yeah. behind my back, I can watch. Yeah. yeah. So you're obviously pretty close. Yes. yes. Very, yeah. very close. Yes. But there are also things that daughters don't share with their mothers. Like? Are you saying there's nothing between you? Nothing of substance, nothing mm -hmm. that matters. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nothing that matters. Everything that matters, she knows. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, I can see that there's a clear, there's, there's yeah. a really uh, a great connection and mm. a great bond. Mabongi, yeah. you've been exceptional. I think you've done a fantastic Thank job. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so Because much. this weekend, your daughter raised all of this money with friends yes. for to assist other women mm. who are in money need. abuse. Yes, mm. absolutely. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, so thank you much. for being Thank here. You. So we're going to take a break so the two of you can have a quick catch up <laughs> since, <laughs> since last night. Thank you. <laughs> since last, since night. last night. Well, Thank she's you. dubbed as the voice of a generation. <laughs> and while they have it out over the break, why don't you go and get yourself a cup of tea or a glass of water? And it is without a doubt, Tandro Tabete is an opinion leader with ideas and beliefs that have the ability to influence lives. So more with her after the break. Welcome back to Real Talk. Tonight we're chatting to someone who's not afraid to chase her dreams until they become a reality. And she's also firmly established herself as a force in the entertainment industry. And that is the one and only Tando Tabete. Tando, we've got a caller for you. Ayanda, Ayanda, you're calling from Peter Maritzburg. Good evening. Hi, I'm well, how are you? Very good. Welcome to Real Talk. You can go ahead and chat to Tando. Okay. Uh, how are you? Hi, Ayanda. How are you good? Good, good. What's your question? I'm good, well, thank you. Um, I was only hoping, um, sorry, um, kind of helped me so much when she was still doing the 9 to 12 on 5 to 10. I remember uh, I requested a song, and because I was um, one of the DJs that uh, lost the job on one of the commercial radio stations in Turbay, so she gave me the opportunity to actually be on the air to introduce my song. Uh -huh. And luckily enough, someone was listening, and uh -huh. I got the call as I actually put the phone down. And now I do a political gossip on the most very big commercial radio station. Oh, wow. Day. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, that was all you, not me. You <laughs> asked for the opportunity, and there it was. Congratulations. Yeah. Ayanda, thank you very thank much you for so your much. call. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so it's a great responsibility that you have as a broadcaster. Mm. Huge. It is. Um, I think you often, I mean, I often forget, because you're sitting in a studio uh, with me, there's three other people, 
and we're just having a good time. Mm -hmm. And you know, you forget that there's actually people listening and how you're touching on the other lives. end. And I guess how you're touching lives as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's I think it's beautiful. The the beauty of radio is that there's there isn't th this many cameras. Yes. So it's, you, you're able to be yourself a little bit more because you just kind of let loose. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just us just chilling and you listening and chilling with us. It's, yes. It's, it's beautiful. Yes, absolutely. So earlier we hinted that the acting dream is still alive and well mm. and you're pursuing it. Mm. Uh, so you're not on radio at the moment. No. Do you want to tell everybody what you're doing? Yes. So there's a new uh, drama series I'm doing, which is incredible. It's written by the amazing Posha Kumete. It's directed by the even more amazing Amanda Lane. Um, it's called The Helpers. And it basically explores the world of helpers that um, often they're in the shadows mm -hmm. of what's actually unseen happening. In unseen society, yeah. and uh, just the power that they have mm. um, from where they stand based on what they see. Um, it's very, it's, it's a thriller drama. Uh, I'm really, Ooh. really excited, a little bit nervous, uh, but nervous is good. Uh, so yeah, it's going to come out. Nervous for the return to screen? No, no. Nervous for the role and the actual, it's, it's a lead role. Uh, she goes through a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the story is told from her view. Um, so it's a lot of pressure, but I'm so excited. It's literally what I've been waiting for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, because all these things, they have to resonate. They mm. have to feel right. And you've made some interesting moves, I must say, um, proving to be that triple thread from being a great MC mm -hmm. to being great on radio, television, and acting. And then just in the causes that you have and being on social media in the impactful way that you've been. So what informs your decisions with partnerships and the kind of things that you take on? I think with everything that I do, it has to feel right. Yeah. Your gut, if your gut says yes. Also, uh, it's so easy to get lost in the work that we do and to just kind of go in whatever direction or whatever comes your way. I'm fortunate in that in the many things that I do, I'm able to now choose mm -hmm. like what it is that I want to do. I mean, I was on a soap for three years, um, which was an incredible experience, but I wanted to get out of that comfortable situation because I feel when you're comfortable, you're not going to grow. Yes. So I wanted to get out of that comfort zone and explore other things, other characters, other adventures. And yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. The business side of things. Mm. It's been, you know, apart from endorsements and apart from what we would call your nine to five, which is playing these various roles that mm. we've just described, you started your own underwear range. An interesting um, lane to play in. Yeah. How challenging has business been? Sure. More, much more challenging than I could have ever imagined. I mean, it's one thing to be an ambassador for a brand. It's another to start a brand yeah. from scratch. Yeah. yeah. Um, but a great learning opportunity. Um, I'm learning as I'm going. Mm. And, you know, because people see Tando, they don't see just a girl, they expect me to, I don't know, do wonders overnight. And yeah, so that it's popping yeah, yeah, that behind the perfect. scenes. And Meanwhile, no, you're keeping 18-hour days. Or that you have this huge factory that, no. <laughs> no. It's in my garage. And, you know, I'm trying to, you know, grow something from infancy to hopefully an empire. Yes. No, it takes a lot of yeah. hard work. And it, it has meant that we're seeing a lot more of your body. Yes. How does that feel? Because if I have to be honest, it's like there is now, the, the, the women are positioning themselves in such a way where they're owning their the physical bodies mm -hmm. and sharing it in a way that they want to mm -hmm. on social media. So owning that power and commanding it in a way that they want to. Was that a deliberate decision? Well, I mean, it's like someone commented on one of my pictures where I was, you know, promoting the underwear range. And he said, um, you're naked. So I'm like, well, it's kind of hard to advertise underwear with clothes on because it's underwear. Yeah. Right? Um, I feel I'm very comfortable in my skin, in my body. Um, and I feel like all women should be. And if you're not, that's also fine. Uh, I think we live in a time where we allow to express ourselves however you know, we want to express ourselves. But with that, I think we need to be very responsible because we put so much pressure on, on young girls. Mm. Um, mm. So it's, it's a very difficult balance to strike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. One more surprise. Oh, gosh, what now? <laughs> I had to drop that. One more surprise. <laughs> Here's another good friend of yours. Hey, Tando. Hope you're well. Um, 
I want you to know that you're very special. You are very um, uh, dear to my heart. I love you so much. You're such an amazing friend. You're so giving. You're also um, kind. Um, and I want you to always remember that in everything that you do, I definitely 100% support you. I am super proud of you. To see you have come um, this far is remarkable. The person that you are, you touch my heart, you touch everyone's heart that's around you. And I hope that you know that you are stronger than you can even imagine. And my love for you just goes on and on and on. I'm so proud of the woman that you're becoming. It's, it's remarkable. If you had told me a year ago, um, uh, a couple of years ago that you were going to be this person, I would have definitely said no. So I want you to know that I love you, love you, love you so much. And our friendship means the world to me because you, my friend, are the family that I chose. <laughs> now I'm curious about that person that she would not have believed she, if they she, shared their dreams. I mean, she's just hilarious. <laughs> she's just funny. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think sometimes I say things and then people are like, what? Mm -hmm. No ways. Like, what are you talking about? So what do you share your dreams with? With my friends, mm -hmm. um, with my family, sometimes with God. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's another big question. And you know this is looming. There have been oh, different reports. Um, you've seen them. Mm. And I don't know what you thought about them because you told the world about your engagement yes. and your lobola. Yes. And then um, some publications went on to write that the engagement is off. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No ring? No ring, it's off. It's off. Mm. Okay. So... That is one of those encroachments into someone's private space. Mm. But then ultimately you're the one that revealed what was going on. Mm -hmm. So do you feel a responsibility to come back and account for what you had shared, that initial news that you had shared? I don't think I need to go into the nitty gritties, mm -hmm. no. Um, I never denied that we're not engaged anymore. Yes. Uh, I don't think I need to tell people the reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, because in as much as I told people that we engaged, I never told people everything. And this is something I don't want to talk about. Yes. How long were you together? Five years. That's a long time. Mm. That's a long time. And how are you feeling about the end of the engagement? Well, I'm good now. So by the time the publications got wind of it, it was, it was. Oh, so it wasn't speculation. It, no, it was. Well, no, at that point it was, it was, it was done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm and it's often, it helps when you have that gap, when you have that space before the yes. rest of the world yes. finds out. Uh, because you wear a brave face every day with mm. the different things that we have to do. I remember when I got divorced mm. as well, it's like you want to at least have your time, mm. you know, to before deal with the rest of the world uh, uh, comes out or before the rest of the world realizes. I mean, it's as with anyone would do, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you get divorced, you don't arrive at the office and say, hey guys, I'm divorced. You know what I mean? Yeah. You sort of will tell your best friend, you'll tell your mom, and then eventually everyone will catch wind of it. Yeah. What's the most painful thing about it? I think getting used to it. It's like death. It's like, it's like, it's like finding a new way of living. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without that person yeah. there. In the routine except their lives it's probably worse mm. are you friends we okay no wars no no, wars. <laughs> no cats no babies to no fight no over. no yeah. <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> well after the break i wrap up my evening with tandoor and we are going to be switching things up and playing an interesting game of never have i ever in front of right my there. mother <laughs> Well, if you've, just, if you've just tuned in, <laughs> we've been in conversation with uh, trailblazing Tando Tabete, and we're about to wrap up our conversation. So, Tando, mm -hmm. I promised you a little game. Yes. Grab Good. your response card. Okay. It has I have. And I have never. And I have never. So, here we go. The first one. Never have I ever lied about my availability, about a gig or an oh. interview I didn't I want mean, to who hasn't? Let's be honest. I have. Okay. I'm not going to put my hand up for that. Yeah, I'm we sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> What's often your excuse? What's the most Maybe it's just reason? that I've, be, I've double booked myself. Oh, okay. But I mean, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The second one, never have I ever crushed on a coworker. 
Ooh, care to share? No. When? Where? I mean, radio, I TV, not radio. Co host. Maybe it was Katle or maybe it was Fatjo. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. My lips are sealed. Ooh, all right. And then the next one. Never have I ever used my celebrity status to get out of a sticky situation. Wow. Three out of three. I have. At least I'm honest. Where? What kind of situations? The airport, usually, like if I'm late for a flight. But I, I don't even say closed. anything. Yeah, it's closed. But I don't even like say anything. They're just like, ah, no loazi. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, San mm -hmm. And then they let me through. Okay. Which is cool. Where else? Nice. Roadblocks? I'm, no. I think uh, clubs. Mm. You just. You just walk in. <laughs> I'd like your life. Okay. Never have I ever re-gifted a gift oh, that no. was given to me. You've never. Oh. Your friends should be comforted to yeah. know that. Or maybe they don't give me gifts. Mm. I'm joking. That's it. <laughs> that is the possibility. Next one. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever shoplifted. I mean, does it count if I was like very little? It does. I was very little. It does. I was I was very, very little. I don't know if my mom remembers, but, oh, no, she looks shocked. So by her face, I don't think she remembers. Um, I was very little. I was with a friend of mine. We went to a jewelry shop. I don't know what we were thinking. I think I was, like, nine. And then we, and then it beeped and everything. And then, Ooh. yeah, then they wouldn't call her mother because her mother was very strict. So then they called my mother. Not that she's not strict. Yes, yeah. yes. But the yeah. embarrassment. What did you yeah. take? It was, like, studs, I think. A little pair of earrings. Yeah. Oh. I learned my lesson. Don't do it. Of course. Hugely embarrassing. Mm. And it's a criminal act. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Never have I ever thrown a diva tantrum on set or a gig. I don't think I have. Mm -hmm. Also, ask? diva. I mean, it's so. What is the male equivalent of a diva? Because guys don't get called that mm -hmm. when they throw their toys. And I've seen many guys, your faves, throw tantrums and they're not called divas it's only when a female does it that she's called a diva yes also the question about how do you juggle it all um, guys never get that question no mm -hmm. no so this is all about equality mm. so you did fairly well there okay we got to be really real yeah so you're handing over this check very soon um and this is your philanthropic act or your way of contributing mm -hmm. to society what got this mission and what made it so important? Because you also ran a campaign not too long ago mm -hmm. about abuse against women mm -hmm. and children. I mean, that was quite dramatic, where it your was. friends were, your, and yourself were, yeah. you were transformed, of course, to reflect domestic violence. I mean, we look at the ills of our country, you know, I, I, there's no country where women are dying faster than we see in, in South Africa. And literally the other day I was Googling, why do men hate women? Mm. And in, in a hope to maybe see you know, what answers Google might have, because I Googled everything. But of course, Google doesn't have the, answer. the answers. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. For me, it's, it's me missioning my friends uh, towards a common cause, towards, you know, hopefully, even if it's to start a conversation, um, to hand over the check, yes, that, you know, will hopefully go towards helping these women. Mm. But also as young women, mm. to, you know, start the conversation and to have hopefully them look at us and say, okay, if they're speaking about this, then surely I can speak about it as well. Yeah. yeah. Have you been or exposed to domestic violence? No. So I, I witnessed my father uh, abuse my mom at a stage. Um, and, you know, as you grow older, you realize you are at a point or a position of a little bit of power where you can have a little bit of influence. And I thought maybe this is something that I needed. Yes. To do. And it's interesting how you were able to reconcile the loving father he was to you mm. and the man who abused your mother at a particular point. Just talk me through that because it can be a really difficult space of tension for any child. I think it's why people don't speak out against it because people are unable to discern between the two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People can't imagine two ideas coexisting. So you either one or the other, you can't be both. Yes. Um, and I had a hard time with that, where people were like, why, you know, why are you, are you doing this? And I'm just like, I, my dad was amazing. He was a, a, a great father. I am who I am, partially because of, of who mm -hmm. he was. Mm -hmm. But this is a truth. This is a fact. This is something that I witnessed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for the bigger part, people don't speak against it because 
how he's so nice. Why yeah. are you? So, yes. Yeah. And it speaks to the fact that we expect to, abusers to look or to be a, a certain, certain type of person and not the loving father to his children. Yeah. Or not the empl employee at work who's hardworking, who's contributing, who's paying his taxes, or the minister at church, whatever it is. We don't, we have, it makes us feel better, I think. If it think looks like a monster. In a particular way. Yes. Yeah. It's easier if it looks like a monster because then you can identify a monster. Mm. You know what I mean? But no. No, I think that's why the message that you posted um, spoke of, I guess, healing, mm. of maturing, mm. and realizing that people are very, very complex. Absolutely. And it's not quite a straightforward yeah. issue. Yeah. Mm. Is that campaign coming back? Well, I mean, every year we have different campaigns. So this year was playing it forward. Um, where you played either for a specific person, for a specific mm. cause, um, whatever it is that you feel strongly about. So mm. I, I didn't want to just center it around abuse, okay. but all the ills that, you know, women face. I mean, something as simple as the diva tantrums that we are every day yeah. subjected to, you know, now accounting Absolutely. for. Absolutely, we have to when resist we, things yes. like that. Well, you've been fantastic. I'm glad we could celebrate you Thank in you this Thank you for having session. me. Thank, Thank you for, you for all here. the surprises. <laughs> <laughs> the first interview I did after landing the Real Talk, con uh, Real Talk job. So thank you, Thank Tando. you. It was wonderful having my guest here tonight and it was definitely a great catch up that we've had with her. So head onto our social media platforms and tell us about your favorite moments from today's show. So we've come to the end of this evening's episode and I want to say a big thank you to you for tuning in from myself, Azania Musaka and the Real Talk team. Good night. Real Talk is proudly sponsored by Huawei P20 Pro and MTN. Each week for 10 weeks, we're giving away the latest Huawei P20 Pro and 10 gigabytes once-off MTN data to 10 amazing storytellers. All you have to do is share your special moments with us. Follow at Huawei ZA and at MTN ZA and tag us with hashtag Huawei P20 and hashtag Real Talk Moments. We want to see and hear your stories and create lasting connections across the country. Each week there's a different theme, so keep checking our social pages for details and you could be a winner.